All right, everyone, this is Katie Wallace talking about food-based cleansing. If you have any questions during the program today, please um, open the chat box. That'll either be at the top of the screen or your bottom, the bottom of your screen if you move your mouse. Um, and we'll have some time at the end for questions too. So before I start, I want to say that I'm sharing this information with you for health education purposes only, and I'm not a medical practitioner, uh, so it should not be taken as medical advice. So we're going to talk about what is cleansing, what are the foods that are most cleansing, as well as what I like to call the body tune-up series, which is a period of uh, specific cleanses. The first is focused on the digestive system, followed by a critter or a parasite cleanse, then a kidney and a liver cleanse. So I wanna start with maybe one of the broader goals of cleansing, which is to bring about health. And health is not defined just as the absence of disease, it's uh, the absence of disease, but also just, you know, being all around healthy person and feeling good. Uh, so adequate energy, feeling like your digestion is good, feeling emotionally and mentally well, and having ideal physiological function for our own bodies um, and where we are in life. So what you eat is very important. Um, even though we sometimes get messages to the contrary. So this quote is from the Nutrition Journal in 2014. While today's modern diet may provide beneficial protection from <laughs> micro and macronutrient <laughs> deficiencies, the, the actual overabundance of calories and macronutrients that we have lead to too much inflammation and a reduction in infection increases in cancer and um, increases in the risk for more allergies and autoimmune issues. So cleansing is a solution to this kind of modern day problem where we have too much excess. So basically we are, um, we have a lot of modern diseases that result from taking in too much food and too much toxins from our environment. So cleansing is a solution. It helps to rid the body of stored toxins. Also, it helps to eliminate um, any unwanted critters or the biotoxins that the critters, by critters I mean different bacteria or parasites that get established in the digestive system and they create toxins that are bad for us. Extra fecal matter or waste from not having proper elimination and extra metabolic waste that can build up on a cellular level from inactivity or um, just too, too much um, extra calories and unhealthy food. So cleansing's great, but we don't just wanna cleanse for the sake of cleanse. Right. I mean, you can you can kind of lose sight of your health if you are fanatical about cleansing, and that's not what I'm about. It's very important to think about balance in your body when you are undertaking a cleanse. So by balance, I mean, we want to have healthy blood sugar. We don't want to do things that lead to very low blood sugar or blood sugar swinging high. We also want to have healthy endocrine and nervous system health, meaning healthy hormones, healthy mental and emotional health. Uh, we want to get relief from chronic pain. We don't want to make chronic health issues worse or create new issues. And we want to support a healthy functioning immune system, as well as healthy digestion overall, improving the body's integrity overall. So cleansing's been around a while. Uh, traditional cultures, have practiced periods of cleansing for thousands of years. And some of the reasons that cleansing have been incorporated into different cultures is for spiritual reasons, for renewing energy, 
for increasing empathy for those who don't have the same access to food that we do. Other modern day reasons for cleansing include overcoming emotional attachments to food, curing a sense of stagnancy, like you're just feeling kind of stuck with a situation in life or, or a particular health situation, wanting to purify the body, wanting to make a smoother transition between seasons. This one's especially appropriate in the fall and wanting to enhance mental awareness or um, for some people dream awareness. There have been a number of scientific studies on cleansing and fasting and overall they conclude that cleansing and fasting help promote a healthy immune system and healthy fluctuations in the metabolic rate of cells which leads to better weight management. Uh, cleansing and fasting also lead to longer lifetimes and relief from fatigue. So one of the main things we talk about with cleansing is eliminating toxins. And we're exposed to toxins all the time now. Um, you know, even though most of us listening in today are um, in Madison, you know, we, we live in a relatively clean environment, but we're still exposed to toxins in the air. Um, heavy metals can be found in dental fillings, in aluminum cookware, in different body products. Pesticides uh, can be uh, used by our neighbors or found in residues on our food. Uh, plastics similarly are in the water supply, um, as well as a, a lot of the food that we might, convenience foods might be contaminated with um, extra plastics that our bodies have to deal with. Um, industrial chemicals may be things you might use around your house for cleaning or for projects or even just walking by someone else's project. Um, and bacterial endotoxins, which I briefly mentioned before, which is when we have an overgrowth of a certain bacteria in the gut, it can actually create toxins um, that create an issue in our bodies. So in some cases, toxins aren't eliminated efficiently. If there's just too many toxins or our body's ability to break down toxins can't keep up, um, then the toxins are gonna accumulate in our cells um, and in our organs. And those can register as a variety of different symptoms for people, uh, headaches, um, lots of allergies are very common. Some people have more neurological issues, brain fog, um, so, th so there can be a wide range of symptoms stemming from kind of an overload of toxins just from everyday life. So the accumulation of these toxins can lead to uh, increasing our risk for disease. So over time, we can become more obese. We can uh, be more prone to diseases like heart disease or uh, cognitive decline. Uh, we can have problems with immune system dysfunction, autoimmunity, cancers. We can become more intolerant um, of the things around us, the foods and the chemicals. And we can have problems with being fertile, being able to get pregnant, or our children having developmental concerns because of these contaminants. So the body does have a way to eliminate toxins. Um, it can be overwhelmed. Um, but, but we do have this innate ability. And it's, there are three stages to detoxification. The first stage is also called phase one, and it's known as activation. Activation is when um, the body locates a toxin and begins to change its chemical structure so that it can eliminate it and move it into phase two and three. So cruciferous vegetables are particularly high in some of the nutrients that help with activation. So any good cleanse may emphasize cruciferous vegetables for that reason. That's one of the reasons why I encourage people to eat them. Neutralization is the second phase or phase two of detoxification. And, and most of this happens in a cellular level in, in the liver. Um, neutralization is when the liver cells take the toxin and make it into something where it can combine with water 
so that it can move on to phase three, which is elimination. So basically activation takes the toxin, changes its chemical structure so that the body can then attach it to water in phase two and then move it out in phase three. And that can happen through the bowel movement or through the bloodstream or through sweating. Um, so things that help with phase two neutralization are protein. So um, you can't cleanse without adequate protein. And, and that can look differently for different people. Uh, you have to have adequate glutathione, which is the body's main antioxidant made in the liver. So you have to have um, a number of good foods, good proteins and fats to make glutathione and lots of sulfur. So sulfur is found in a number of vegetables like uh, those in the onion group. And um, you can also promote sulfur through taking an Epsom salt bath. So all of those things help with a phase two. And then phase three, as I said, is elimination. And so we're really focused here on um, adequate bowel movements, but also adequate kidney support. So fat and salt are very important in the diet to have adequate bowel movements. And uh, probiotics can sometimes be helpful also uh, in order to have the good bacteria in the gut to make a healthy stool. Sometimes, that first phase, phase one activation is too strong. And there certainly are different things that we do as people that like drink alcohol or, um, you know, paint things that tend to upregulate phase one without phase two support. So basically, uh, you know, if you drink a lot of, take in a lot of caffeine um, or um, drink too much alcohol, you might've experienced a hangover from that. That is, Kind of the side effect of um, phase one being upregulated without the support of the phase two and the phase three, which are what neutralize the toxin and get rid of it. It's the same if you have a headache from paint fumes. That has your body has activated phase one. It's really trying to deal with the inhaled toxin, but it's unable to um, move it to phase two and phase three quickly enough. And thus you're having the symptom of the headache in reaction to the paint fume. So to help our bodies, we have to have all three stages be fully supported. And so that's something to keep in mind when you're doing a cleanse or designing a cleanse is just to make sure that you're going to be uh, supporting and also maybe avoiding some of these things that you know um, will will overactivate the first phase without supporting the other two. So there's no alcohol on the cleanse. Usually there's no coffee, or at least people are weaning off of coffee on a cleanse um, and, and similar things. So we talked about toxins, but talking about metabolic health or cellular wellness, um, I think is equally important. As we're aging, all of us naturally be become insulin resistant, which means that as we take in more carbohydrates, our body makes more insulin and that insulin is less effective. And so we have a harder time getting the energy into the cells, but we also have all of these negative effects of too much insulin. And that can show up as some of the things listed here, fatigue, constantly hungry, can't lose weight, cravings, um, having different aches and pains, chronic pain. Um, it can also lead to diseases, diabetes, um, Alzheimer's, uh, and hormonal problems, heart and heart disease, cancer. So we want to focus on uh, this issue, insulin resistance, and modify the diet and potentially provide other nutrients that help balance blood sugar and help support the body in proper energy production so that we can avoid this trap of, uh, you know, living with these symptoms of insulin resistance and also um, having a better health outcome and being able to avoid, um, you know, some of the problems that insulin resistance leads to when it's happening chronically. So we talked about toxins, we talked about insulin resistance and metabolic health. The immune system is another big thing we've got to keep in sight and, and be well supported because the immune system plays such a huge role in 
inflammation and reducing chronic inflammation. So if we wanna be healthy individuals, uh, we need to keep inflammation under control and being aware of what things trigger our immune system in terms of our daily habits is really critical. So the immune system will make something called pro-inflammatory cytokines. A cytokine is just a chemical that the immune system makes when it's active. Uh, but when the immune system is acting, uh, having to react too much or is already under a chronic stress, it will create a lot more pro-inflammatory cytokines. And that can lead to kind of a chronic state of inflammation where someone's always reacting to things, or maybe they even have an autoimmune disease or um, another disease because of this um, chronically activated immune system. So this becomes particularly important in terms of food choices. So we want to pick foods that we know help calm the cytokine activity and kind of help the immune system recover so that it can act like it's in better balance. So these are the types of foods uh, that I encourage people to eat on the body tune-up, which is my name for the, the food-based cleanse that I help people with. So front and center are a lot of vegetables. And uh, the vegetables provide basically food for the good bacteria in the gut, but also, um, you know, some, some phytonutrients that are very helpful for our bodies too. And uh, good quality protein like the bison is uh, shown here. And then um, instead of grains or other starches, I have a sweet potato. Uh, I usually actually don't encourage people to eat a lot of starchy vegetables like sweet potatoes, at least not in the beginning of a cleanse, because anything that you eat that's got some kind of natural sugar in it is going to have an insulin response. And some people are more sensitive than others, but um, generally you're going to have the best outcome if you really dial down the carbohydrates, at least in the beginning. Um, and that helps the cells to function more healthily and to, to really reduce insulin production which helps reduce inflammation overall. So um, root vegetables can be used, but usually not in the beginning and usually in a way that's very mindful. And then one big food group I didn't have on the last screen is fat. So fat is critical for detoxification. Uh, and in detoxification, we also need to get a lot of good food in and you can't get all of the nutrients you need actually to where they need to go in the body without good fats. Um, so although we all have come through this kind of fat, low fat crazed culture, I think it's really important to do an about face when you're uh, looking at cleansing and um, realize that the fat's really important. One of the other reasons is that fat replaces carbohydrates for energy. And uh, I have a whole other lecture that talks about fat-based diets where we explore this in more detail, but basically fat as a fuel on a cellular level is a lot more efficient for producing more energy. So you're gonna be more energetic with fat. Fat also provides key um, vitamins for the immune system like vitamin A, E, D, and K. These are all fat soluble vitamins. Um, that help support some of these different health areas I've been talking about. So you don't wanna do a cleanse without fat. Um, and, but you also wanna pick fats that aren't uh, aggravating to the immune system. And some people um, may be more sensitive, say to fats in nuts, and they may need to choose mostly oils or um, sources of saturated fat like duck fat or clarified butter. Um, but, but fats are really important and you're not going to be very successful at doing the cleanse if you don't eat adequate fat. So for most people, in, like in the beginning of the cleanse, the first phase, the digestive cleanse, that may look like two tablespoons of fat at every meal, such as two tablespoons of olive oil. Fish is a great food to eat on a cleanse, in my opinion. You want to make sure that it's wild caught, uh, cold water fish is best for cleansing. 
Um, but assuming that um, it's a, a healthy fish, generally a fish low in uh, heavy metals, uh, it's going to be a very good source of DHA, which is the fatty acid. It's an omega-3 fatty acid found in fish. Uh, that's a great source of fuel for the body and very helpful in reducing inflammation. And so it's a great food to have in your repertoire if you're um, following a cleanse and kind of trying to upgrade your diet overall or trying to experience some kind of therapeutic benefit from the food. Fruits can be okay, but I have de-emphasized here because they are a source of natural sugars. And because we want metabolic health, um, we don't want to have much fruit. So some people may include some fruits like strawberries or other uh, low sugar berries, um, but it's generally not something that I promote a lot of on the cleanse. Juicing can be helpful too, especially juicing low starch vegetables like celery and cucumbers, things that are green. Um, but you have to be careful with juicing because it can concentrate a lot of sugar, uh, which could uh, backfire on you in terms of results. So um, if you're someone who has some blood sugar issues, like you get hangry or um, you know that your blood sugar swings, you have a lot of cravings at night, even after eating a good meal, then juicing might not be, um, might not want to be a, a real integral part of your cleanse. You might want to focus on eating more foods, just cooked foods or whole foods instead. These are the types of foods you want to avoid. Uh, so bread, anything grain-based. So even things like rice and oatmeal, I would not do on a cleanse because they're very high in lectins and they tend to be inflammatory to the digestive system. And uh, you also wouldn't do legumes like lentils or black beans, uh, for example, while on a cleanse, because uh, they're similar in that way to grains. And we want to be thinking too about what is the circadian rhythm with your meals while you're on a cleanse. You um, you want to make sure that you're eating nourishing foods at the right time of the day for you so that you don't end up, for example, craving sweets at night and really struggling um, with um, the nature of the cleanse. So you want to be, um, it, when people do the cleanse, I have private consultations with them to, to help set this up. But, uh, you know, you just want to start to think about self-awareness, like what's working for you uh, when do you need to eat? When do you need to make more time <laughs> so that you can eat um, so that your body is really nourished and you're not having signs of dysfunction? So it's really critical to avoid at least these top six allergens when doing a cleanse or any dietary upgrade. Um, the majority of these are here because they provoke inflammation through the immune system. So gluten, dairy, corn, soy, peanut, all have a large molecular peptide structure. So basically, if you look at the protein that makes up the food, it's very big compared to um, celery or cucumbers or um, olive oil or things that aren't listed here. And that's important because when the body is inflamed and under stress, the immune system becomes more active in the gut in a situation called leaky gut. And I'll show you a slide about leaky gut in a couple minutes. Um, and when leaky gut occurs, the immune system has a greater access, like it's, it's encountering more of what you're eating. And it will react to larger protein or larger molecular peptides. So that's one of the critical reasons that eliminating these foods is really helpful for people. It's not like that there's something inherently wrong about the food. Uh, well, unless it's genetically modified, I guess, but um, it's that the, the food is like a big target for your immune system. And so it's going to aggravate the immune system and that's going to lead to more chronic inflammation. 
So, and sugar is in this list because sugar leads to the production of insulin, which leads to chronic inflammation. So these would be the top six things I would get out of the diet at a minimum. Um, and, you know, you probably guessed just from what I've said about the diet so far that you're getting out even more foods than that too. I mean, basically when I have people start the digestive cleanse, they're eating low starch vegetables, um, they're eating um, uh, maybe a, a modest amount of protein, really being thoughtful amount, about the amount of protein, but some people need a fair amount of protein, even on a cleanse, and adequate fat. And the reason that you're taking out all the other foods is that if you think of your body like a, like a, a bathtub, when a bathtub is overflowing, you know, there's water going everywhere. You've got, you could think of this as a metaphor for chronic inflammation. And if you want to use food as a therapy, you've got to take out a lot of the water. You've got to find a lot of the stressors and get rid of them. So that's why I don't just have people take out just one of those allergens like gluten, because I really want the person to experience the dramatic shift the benefit that they're really looking for. And you typically can't get that benefit unless you take out a lot of foods at once. Then once you feel better, once you accomplish your goal, you can experiment or you can test, you know, to see what foods do work and begin to expand the diet again. Uh, but the, you know, kind of the bathtub analogy works just as an idea of like why you have to take out so many foods to get a therapeutic benefit. A mentor of mine used another analogy. You can imagine if your body um, has a chronic problem or you're uh, an illness that it's like there's a thousand fingers poking you all day long. I mean, that would get really aggravating, right? Well, what if you took 999 of those fingers away and now you're only getting poked by one finger that's a lot easier to tolerate than getting poked by a thousand finger points all day long so that's kind of what you do with this type of cleanse or elimination diet is you're just removing the vast volume of stressors and then the body kind of automatically gets better and you want to be smart about which stressors you're removing too right like most people are going to get a much bigger benefit from eliminating gluten or dairy because of the large peptide structure than they are from eliminating celery because it just doesn't tend to aggravate the body the way that these other foods do. So the body tune-up process that I lead people to generally starts with uh, a cleansing diet, although most people who do this actually start the diet like on day one of the digestive cleanse. But other people will want to get started in advance. And so you want to be thinking how to prepare yourself for this type of a shift. You know, what inflammatory foods can you reduce or get rid of? Um, and uh, I think I mentioned the lectins before when we were talking about grains, but a low lectin diet just means um, that it, it's anti-inflammatory in the way that lectins are the plant-based chemicals that it uses to protect itself in nature. And some foods, especially plant-based foods, are very high in lectins. And when someone has aggravation in their digestive system, the lectins just make it all worse. So that's why something like a paleo diet or a keto diet tends to bring about some improvements for people because you're eliminating a big source of lectins. So the digestive cleanse is a 10-day process followed by the critter or parasite cleanse then the kidney cleanse, and then the liver cleanse. So there's a specific reason that you want to go in this order. We start with the digestive cleanse because when your body's cleansing, let's say that we decide to, you decide to undergo a dietary upgrade and maybe take some things that promote those three steps of detoxification that naturally happen in the body. Well, most of the metabolic waste is going to end up in your colon. And if your colon's not functioning properly, the cleanse is going to mostly backfire. So you have to make sure that the digestive cleanse is supported. And that's basically the function of the 10-day digestive cleanse. 
So things that generally help with um, moving the stool through the body and kind of mopping up or pulling up toxins are used in conjunction with an optimal diet for 10 days in the digestive cleanse. So not everybody can, can tolerate psyllium or flax. So these foods aren't perfect for everyone, but for most people, um, increasing their fiber from foods like these can be very helpful. And taking something like this Sonase number seven is a liquid bentonite, which is a clay that absorbs things to it and pulls them out through the stool. So this will, um, you know, if you just change your diet and eat foods that help with natural detoxification, you'll, you will get a benefit. And I've had a number of people do the body tune up without taking any supplements and they do get benefits. The purpose of taking these extra things is to kind of accelerate the process. And certainly for some people, they make a very big difference. So um, if you're not, if your elimination system is not that great, something like the bentonite will really make um, the benefits of the cleanse um, be more, be greater for you, right? Like you, you probably achieve greater weight loss because as you're eliminating toxins from your cells, they're actually going to get out of your body through the help of something like the bentonite clay. Also want to think about integrity of the gut overall. So in some cases, a probiotic, like um, Progert is the highest um, volume of probiotic available without a prescription. It's 1 trillion critters per dose. Um, so sometimes something like that is appropriate or something like the ion biome, which is shown on the right, is a uh, supplement that helps uh, to repair the gut uh, so that toxins are having less of an effect and, and it, it has a, a role in building the population of good bacteria and also sealing up the gut so that leaky gut is not happening or is not as severe. Green drinks can be used during this part of the cleanse too. So a green drink could be like a powder that's got a blend of green vegetables. Sometimes you'll see them with spirulina or wheatgrass. Some people like to make their own green drinks and that's fine too. You just have to keep in mind um, because you're liquefying the food, it, it could become more concentrated in sugar. Um, so, but so long as you're staying relatively low in the sugar content, green drinks can really help. They can help with cravings. Uh, so it can be a good strategy to have a green drink, for example, when you're done with work in the afternoon and you're starting to prepare dinner. A green drink can really help stabilize the blood sugar or cut back on cravings during a window of time when maybe you're more sensitive to that. Green drinks can also help people who don't like to eat a lot of vegetables or, or maybe you're traveling. Um, so they can be very convenient. But, but generally the idea with a green drink during the cleanse is that it's just providing a lot of extra nutrition. And you know, if you wanna shift things in your body, you've gotta pro provide more nutrition than you were before. So there's a big emphasis on trying to get local fresh vegetables, whether or not you're growing that or able to get that at the farmer's market. Um, but certainly while doing the digestive cleanse, probably making more trips than usual to the store just to make sure that you're getting plenty of fresh produce. Um, and you want to plan your meals in advance. You'll be a lot more successful if you know what you're going to eat ahead of time and you'll be less tempted to just eat whatever because <laughs> you're hungry. Um, one thing people like to do is make big trays of roasted vegetables in the oven. That can be a nice thing to do. We're going to be starting this cleanse in October when the weather's getting cooler. And so doing that or making soup with the vegetables in advance can help a lot with um, just feeling satiated and, and happy, being a happy person while you're doing something like this. Because if you don't eat enough, you won't be happy. Whoops. Okay, so after you've kind of got that groundwork laid, having regular bowel movements, hopefully on the digestive cleanse, we're kind of ready to move on to tackle some bigger issues. And the critter cleanse is really focused on having a healthy gut biome. So once we've got elimination going, 
you know, focus a little bit more on the gut biome, which is a, just a word for the bacteria and other organisms that make up uh, the gut environment. So the purpose of the critter cleanse is to promote healthy flora in the digestive system and to eliminate the unhealthy ones. So two weeks um, can sometimes not be enough for people, um, but certainly for the process of the cleanse and moving us on to the kidney and the liver cleanse is adequate. Most people will do the critter cleanse for two to three weeks and it involves taking specific herbs. So when I meet with people one-on-one, -on -one, I help determine what the best herbs are. Approximately 15% of the gut lining is composed of endocrine cells, which are producing most of our serotonin and dopamine neurotransmitters. So serotonin and dopamine are like the hormones for our nervous system. So what this means is that the gut's actually making most of the brain's neurotransmitters. So uh, the integrity of the gut cannot be overstated. And it's, it's really important for mental health, emotional health, and, and um, many other body systems besides the nervous system and the endocrine system to have a healthy gut biome. So in this cleanse, sometimes we are um, considering adding in some digestive enzymes, which are a supplement, um, but can also be found in lower levels in fermented foods like sauerkraut. Uh, digestive enzymes help with breaking food down so that other opportunistic bacteria and organisms aren't fermenting um, the food and creating more issues in the gut. So they basically kind of help make your digestion more efficient so you're absorbing things better and you're having less of a problem with other critters in there. You also want to think about supporting the gut lining. The gut lining is only one cell layer thick and is very vulnerable to stress and um, you know, unhealthy foods or, or just not, not necessarily what we would think of as unhealthy, but maybe just genetically modified um, foods um, can really affect the integrity of the gut. And then Finally, as I alluded to earlier, we're taking anti-parasitic herbs that help to address um, an imbalance in overgrowth if it's there for things like candida or maybe a type of parasite or a, a bacterial overgrowth. So here's a picture of leaky gut. Um, so you can see on the left that there's a healthy gut lining and you can see that the lining is only one cell layer thick and that it keeps food particles from getting through, only nutrients get through, and it keeps yeast and bacteria and parasites and other things from getting through too. But as we're under different stresses, and I, by stress I mean very broad, I have a whole lecture on leaky gut where we talk about this in more detail, but, but basically there's a lot of different types of stresses that degrade the digestive lining. And in that case, particles that shouldn't are getting through the gut. And that's where we have inflammation from the foods we're eating. Fewer nutrients are getting absorbed and um, we can have problems with infections um, because the integrity of the gut is uh, diminished. So while we're doing a critter cleanse in this workshop, we're talking a lot about leaky gut and different ways to support the integrity of the gut lining and rebuild it. And then we're ready to move on to a four-day kidney cleanse. The kidneys and the liver are internal organs that are cleansers, basically, or at least part of their function is cleansing. So the kidneys are full of um, tiny capillaries that are filtering the blood constantly. So like any filter, uh, they need to be cleaned out every once in a while, right? If you've had a fish tank, you know that every once in a while you, you still got to clean out the, the filter, make sure your filter is functioning, help it out. So that's basically what the kidney cleanse does. And we do that with special diet, but also with herbs that naturally support the kidneys. Um, and this is important because we're moving on to the liver cleanse as the final cleanse in the series. And the liver works closely with the kidneys 
just like it works with the, the colon and the gut environment. So that's why all of those steps kind of have to happen first before we can work on the liver, which is um, the largest internal organ um, and the one that's most heavily dealing with detoxification. Oops. So I talked about, I introduced you to the three phases of detoxification already, and those primarily happen in the liver. And there's a number of things in our modern environment that um, are more har harmful to the liver, such as any kind of synthetic hormone, which could be in a food or in a prescription or in processed foods. Um, and so we are um, working to support the liver and these three stages of detox um, kind of as the, the last effort now that we've, you've shifted the diet, you've prepped these different body systems, now you can really um, activate the natural process of detoxification in the liver to get even bigger benefit and kind of relief from any stored toxins um, or, or other issues that may be affecting your body on a cellular level or the liver specifically. So just to review quickly, phase one is activation where the body takes the toxin and um, starts to change its chemical structure. So you're gonna have plenty of cruciferous vegetables already through these several weeks leading up to this cleanse. Phase two is neutralization where the body's cells in the liver then take the toxin that's been shifted and make it water soluble so that then it can move on to phase three which is elimination where it gets either sent through the bloodstream to the kidneys or to the colon to be moved out in a bowel movement. And besides detoxification, the liver has a number of other important functions like metabolizing different nutrients, storing them, helping break them down, helping redistribute them throughout the body, balancing different hormones, as well as um, storing fat or burning it or breaking it down. So when we get to the actual liver cleanse, we've got this great supportive diet that supports those three stages of detoxification. We've also um, are prepping the body for a period of 10 days with herbs and special foods that promote the stages of detoxification. So this is a picture of dandelion and burdock root um, as well as apples, which are high in malic acid, which help a lot with bioflow, um, which is how the liver um, moves toxins around and moves them ultimately out of the liver and into the colon to be eliminated. So there's the digestive cleanse critter and kidney cleanse that pretty much prep the body to be ready for the liver cleanse. And then the liver flush itself has two components. It has this preparatory phase where you're drinking this. I like to have people drink a tea, but you can take a capsule that has herbs that promote phase one and phase two detoxification. And then um, you, you do a couple of fat-free days to build up the tension of a little more bile in the liver gallbladder. And then you do this lemon and olive oil drink. Lemons and olive oils are, sorry, and olive oil are both things that help release a lot of bile. So it's like we're, we're promoting a lot of bile production, a lot of healthy liver function, getting things going, making sure everything's working well, mobilizing maybe anything that may or may not be stored um, and then we're building up the tension by having a fat-free diet for a couple of days. And then we're providing a lot of fat and things that promote uh, bile flow in order to have a big release. So that's the whole idea behind the liver flush. And for some people, um, it works really well. Um, I think overall, people generally feel very positive. Some people do have this like big aha um, experience after the liver cleanse. They just, they, they can really feel 
that it made a big difference for them, better thinking, better memory, improvement in blood pressure, digestion, emotions, weight loss, reduction of sensitivities, um, and cravings. So these are a lot of the benefits of, of the actual liver flush itself. So in summary, uh, I hope you feel like you're equipped with the information about you know, what's generally included in a cleansing diet. Typically, the diet during the digestive cleanse is the most restrictive, and then we're systematically adding in some foods after those 10 days. And then after the liver cleanse, then is an important time of testing foods, uh, where one could just be testing in a very practical way, like beginning to reintroduce the foods and listening to the body. Um, or you actually can do blood testing. Um, so, so the word testing could mean a lot of different things, but it's a nice and very critical phase of um, you know, finding what is the new normal for you after having this intensive experience on um, this cleansing diet and taking these cleansing herbs. You know, how do you integrate that into your life um, and move on? So I will be taking a group through this 40-day cleanse beginning on October 6th. And you can register for this online workshop on my website. And I do have scholarships available and uh, strongly encourage anyone to apply. So there's, you can reach out to me if you need more information about any of this, but the application for the full scholarships is a week from today. And all the um, information is on my website. So there's my website, humannaturellc.com. And I'll post the, some of these testimonials for the cleanse as a close. Uh, it looked like maybe there were a couple questions here. Let me look. Okay, there were, there's one question. Um, what about shrimp during the cleanse? Can shrimp be helpful the way that salmon is? Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think, um, I think shrimp can be incorporated on a cleanse. However, um, I think it depends on how sensitive the individual is uh, because shrimp tend to be bottom feeders um, and also tend to be a common allergen. Um, then it may not be the ideal food for people, but it's certainly a great source of uh, fatty acids and uh, otherwise very dense in nutrition. So, so I think it's possible that shrimp could be included on a cleanse, but it's not usually in my basic um, food plan for the reasons I mentioned. Um, and then there was another question, is it possible to send the scholarship request letter to me via email rather than USPS in the mail? Yes, that's fine. Um, if you've got my email address, um, you are welcome to um, apply for the scholarship electronically as well by attaching your letter like as a PDF or something like that. That's fine. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining me. And also thanks for hanging in there since this is the first outdoor webinar that I've done. I hope that uh, the recording came or my voice came through okay and you didn't hear too much annoying background noise. And uh, thanks again.